Elite Shock Creators Giannis Damian and Middleton combined for a vicious 84, while a breakout rookie had his best game as a pro just when head coach and former Raptors assistant Adrian Griffin needed him to. Unfortunately, former member of the purple and gold Malik Beasley, currently leading the NBA in three-point percentage, has been completely overlooked by the basketball universe. Laker GM Rob Palenka should have re-signed Bees, and Laker head coach Darvin Ham should have had him in the playoff rotation this past spring. LeBron may have forgotten his handshake with Bees, but Malik's proven them all wrong in Wisconsin. A game-altering sequence took place in the late third frame when tied at 72, featured 2023 NCAA champion and 36th overall NBA draft pick out of UConn and Andre Jackson Jr., shuffling over on the backside for a shocking rejection of an attempted TJD poster. On the very next possession, Wiggins doubles Giannis in the post, leaving Dame Dalla wide open when Adetokounmpo kicks it out. This new Milwaukee tandem is dangerous, and they are arguably have the most formidable assemblage of talent around them of any team in the NBA. From their 2021 title three years ago, the Bucks have seven highly impactful players to that run left over from it in 2024. Factoring in the roster improvement from GM John Horst in the interim of that championship, and when it comes to potentially winning another chip this year, the Milwaukee Bucks should not be forgotten about. However, while the Bucks' third best offensive rating carries them, this video decides if their 19th best defensive rating stops them from being considered considered top contenders. Right quick, just 11.9% of you watching at this very moment are subscribed. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Also hit thumbs up on this video as it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. Last but not least, for reactionary hot takes on Twitter, along with the best NBA edits you'll find on Instagram, make sure you click the link in the description and then go follow me on the gram and X to show your support on those two platforms. I'd greatly appreciate it, but let's get right back to the content. After posting his first double-double as a pro against the Dubs, Andre Jackson Jr. took the time to introduce us to his repertoire. I'm a defender first. I can rebound. I know I'm not to play the game. I know how to read the game on both ends of the floor. But I think uh, my game has just changed. Uh, I'm more off the ball, and I think that's where I'm starting to learn, the playing the dunker. I played in the dunker a lot, a lot last year in the, um, in the tournament, but really like uh, slid and found myself as a player that can play in that position consistently. And, and be effective from that position. You know what I mean? Um, at this level, you're playing with superstars. Uh, I, every time I get a rebound, I can't just take off the other end. You know what I mean? Got to flip it back to Giannis and Dane and find ways to and get them clean, good open shots. And, but I love it, man. That's I love to play the game that way. I'm an unselfish player, pass first player. But at the end of the day, uh, just got to take it, take it whatever the game. You know? As Ajax alluded to, he's learned to operate well in the dunker spot, which has allowed him to fit in as a role player next to Giannis, Dame, Chris, and Brook. Operating in the dunkers right here, despite getting blocked on this reverse, he's able to lunge out for an in-traffic recovery and spring back up for the finish. Whether it was finishing plays in that dunker spot position and in some cases completing multi-effort sequences, making the right passing reads in the half court to set up teammates down low, grabbing key rebounds, or providing beastly stances defensively, Andre Jackson Jr. showed us he's a name to remember for one of the best teams in the NBA. However, the most staggering moment from the rookie in a career night against the Dubs came right here, where after a rare three-point brick from Bees, Andre soars in, springs up, and hangs over three defenders plus Giannis for a two-handed putback that he makes look easy. That was clean. Ajax has also displayed three-point shooting ability, attempting one triple per night and making just under 40% of them. Detailing his rookie's timely showing over the injured yet scrappy Golden State Warriors, head coach Adrian Griffin would say, quote, He made some big-time plays. He's a big-time player. He was a winner in college. Has a motor like I haven't seen in a long time. Imposes his will on the game. He just made big-time plays. He made winning plays. That's who Dre is. That was his first double-double. We needed every rebound. He had six offensive rebounds. He's guarding the best player on the other side. He's shaping into being a really, really special player in this league. End quote. Malik Beasley is attempting an average of 6.23s per night and knocking down what's a career high by a mile 47.8% of them, putting him in decent company directly ahead of Kevin Durant of the Phoenix Suns for the NBA's highest deep range clip. As touched on in the intro of this video, it's that sweet stroke making the Lakers regret not valuing his catch and shoot ability which fit nicely next to LeBron James at times. To be fair, his numbers tailed off down the stretch of last season in LA after being traded mid-season from Minnesota, but in hindsight, it was a bad call to take Beasley out of the rotation entirely, as he could have helped you win a game or two against Denver if he was in a flow. So, Bucks Nation, 
I know it's been all the way back since the trade for Dame that we've talked about the Bucks on this channel, but with consecutive wins over the two teams who I've brought up the most this year in Boston and Golden State, it was only right to grant some attention to Milwaukee. It's worth noting the Celtics were on the second night of a back-to-back -back and the Warriors were very injured, but that doesn't take away from the Bucks taking care of business. The Greenfield Wisconsin native in 2021's Wisconsin Mr. Basketball and Brandon Pajemski is a player we have talked a lot about this season, and in his return home, Pod's impressed by dropping dropping 23 points and 10 rebounds. But it wasn't enough to take down the powerhouse Bucks, who followed up a 33-point beatdown over the number one seeded Celtics by dropping 47 in the final frame against the Dubs, their highest scoring fourth quarter of the season. Chris Middleton stepping up was a welcome sight if you're a Bucks fan, as Cash cooked his way to a 24-piece 10-dime double-double, his highest scoring and assist total of January. For another franchise legend in Brooke Lopez, while the 35-year-old out of Stamford is second best in the association behind 19-year-old Victor Wembanyama in blocks per game, the advanced stats actually say that Lopez is struggling defensively this season. Lopez ranks as merely the 15th best center in terms of defensive rating, so while the blocks are nice, the advanced numbers show he's got to increase his value on this end. We know how good he was last year. For those putting Dame Dalla at fault for averaging career lows in multiple major categories, you're not realizing the man's a second option for the first time since his first few NBA seasons next to LaMarcus Aldridge around a decade ago. With sacrifice, Dame's numbers were bound to take a dip, but you have to remember he isn't required to rack up the stats he did in Portland in order for his new team in Milwaukee to have success. He just needs to be a second star who can complement Giannis and be somewhat stable defensively without getting taken advantage of too much by mismatch. Matches. More on the six-time All-NBA players coming up. Going back to my question from the intro, though, asking whether or not Milwaukee's 11th from the bottom defensive rating is concerning, to balance out their drastic difference in offensive and defensive output, we should take into account where they rank in rebounding. The Bucks being top 10 in overall rebounds per game and top 4 in defensive rebounds per game shows they're making the hustle plays and therefore are still capable of flipping a switch on the defensive end like a ton of their cores done in the past come the postseason. Drew Holiday being replaced by Damian Lillard, I know doesn't help them on the defensive side, but given the all-time great deep-range sniper that Dame is on the other end, I don't think they're going to have too much of a problem. Dame averaged over 34 points and 10 dimes on a 46-45-94 shooting split the last time he had a chance to suit up for playoff basketball. That guy becoming your second option is going to be deadly for defenses to game plan for over a 4-7 to seven game basis come April, May, and June. After getting monumentally upset by Miami in last spring's first first round, John Horst in the front office knew things couldn't stay the same, so opted to make the tough business decision to trade away a franchise legend in Drew Holiday. But based off what we've seen from Milwaukee this season, and also given we're in the bucket-getting era, the Bucks have put together another built-for-the-postseason machine by acquiring Dame Dalla. What I mean by bucket-getting era, which I've said in prior videos, is that 10 of the 16 greatest offensive ratings of all time have through half of the season all been produced by teams in 2023 24. The Bucks' offense is on paper not only third best this season, but third greatest all time, also behind this year's Indiana Pacers and Boston Celtics. So while many are concerned about Dame being a downgrade from Drew defensively, you have to consider we're amidst the offensive revolution in the NBA. Boating well in terms of that, Dame ranks number 5 in total points as the pick and roll creator, while Giannis ranks top 10 in points in all of isolation, post-up, and transition scoring. Just as crucially, the Bucks duo of Giannis and Damian aren't just great off the dribble creators, but they also make up two of the top 7 ranked players in free throw attempts. Middleton's also super crafty at draw drawing fouls, so the Bucks can create buckets at will. That said, my question to the community, will Milwaukee's game translate to the playoffs when things get much more physical and the refs aren't calling as many fouls? Best answer gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters with the most shout outs by June 21st earn free NBA merch of their choosing. Today's shout out goes to Josh who says in response to what the worst call against the Raptors was, the push off on Schroeder was absolutely ridiculous leading to a wide open dunk because apparently you're allowed to shove your defender to the ground now. And the one on RJ during a close game during crunch time, we need a new commissioner to come audit these refs. Fiery take right there. Appreciate every answer. Have a good one. DFlow signing off.